the book definition or like the Wikipedia definition of generative AI is here and I'm not going to uh, read it word by word but basically what we need to get from this is that it's a type of AI that uses a variety of techniques such as deep learning, neural network, um, machine learning to produce new content and that is not simply a modification of the data or of the training data that you give in. It's more of like the model learning the patterns to derive new insights, uh, to give an output that you might have not imagined or your brain couldn't have fathomed that that could come out. And this all will also make sense as we uh, proceed in these slides. Um, and you also know about the text to video, text to images, uh, all of those tools that have come up and they are leveraging generative AI as well. I know that we have all heard about GPT, but I still feel that GANs are not getting enough credit that they should because they are a powerful method, uh, specifically for the synthetic uh, data. So that's why I wanted to put this difference out there that even beside GPT, we have this very powerful GANs model uh, that have a generator and a discriminator kind of a model. Generator generates new data, as the name suggests, and discriminates helps in discriminating what is fake versus real data. And if you haven't heard about synthetic data, that is one of the most powerful applications of GANs. And the next is uh, GPT. Um, and I know we all heard about it, but the how is GPT trained? So GPT basically is trained on the entire Wikipedia corpus. So all the risks that you have been hearing, all the hallucinations that you have been experiencing is also because there is a lot of information available on the internet which is incorrect. It makes it sophisticated, yes, because it's large data, but it also makes it risky at the same time. So both a boon and a bane there. So some of the things I already discussed, but uh, the future looks bright in a way that we are going towards the low code, no code approach. Uh, definitely we would see AI coming out of Jupyter Notebooks and into products which will make the experience of our business users seamless. Uh, because earlier they used to think, oh, there's a black box that generates things and we are done, boom. Um, so it is going to transform not only the experience for our customers through personalization, but also for our business partners. Um, and another one that I'm excited about is some of the roles that will come with uh, this wave of AI. So bringing all the risks under one umbrella, just to reiterate, uh, we spoke about uh, model hallucination, but information leak is another risk, and uh, I'm sure you must have been following the news what happened with Samsung, and now companies are deliberately blocking uh, GPT because it's also posing a risk of leaking the customer data, specifically the PII. Uh, so we all want our customer data to be secure. Um, information leak is definitely an issue. Uh, by the way, Morgan Stanley blocked it from my laptop, so I can't use ChatGPT at work anymore. Uh, that is one way to combat it. Uh, another is uh, bias. Um, and I'm sure you all must have faced it. I face it all the time, specifically when I'm asking AI to generate my headshot. It can't generate an image of a woman like me because it can't capture those cultural aspects. So definitely all of these models are still biased towards one section of the society. And then uh, while the prompt engineers are thinking about those perfect prompts uh, and good prompts to get the accurate output, there are uh, people in the society who are also thinking about jailbreaks and what prompts to put for, for you know, the next uh, uh, nuclear war <laughs> or something like that. So that is risky and that is also one risk that these models are posing right now.